In this video, we are going to learn about the economic impact of cyclones. For this video, we will take the example of the latest Amphan cyclone and step by step evaluate the damages done by the cyclone. Before we start, if you want to learn about the formation and mechanism behind a cyclone, I have a separate video dedicated to it. Please find the link in the description and watch it. Once you understand the basic mechanism, it does not matter which cyclone it is, you will get the idea. Many of you have asked me who gets to decide what name is given to a particular cyclone. What is the system behind it? First of all, it purely depends on the region where the cyclone occurs. For the Indian Ocean region, naming of the cyclones began in the year 2000 and a formula was agreed in 2004. Eight countries in the region that is Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Oman, Pakistan and India submitted a list of names. These countries decide the names of cyclones that occur in the Indian Ocean region. A name is chosen from the list in a sequential manner. Amphan happens to be the last name on the current list before a new one begins. The name Amphan means sky and was given by Thailand in 2004. Now that we have understood the meaning behind the name of this cyclone, let's move ahead with a step-by-step -step analysis. We know that this cyclone occurred in the Bay of Bengal region and its impact was massively felt in the coastal states of Odisha and West Bengal. Now whenever a cyclone occurs, it is usually associated with storms, torrential rain and strong winds. Cyclone Amphan's maximum wind speed went up to around 185 km per hour. As per the Indian Meteorological Department, cyclones are classified on the basis of the wind speed. Have a look at this list. That means Cyclone Amphan is a Category 2 cyclone which is a very severe cyclonic storm. The impact from this magnitude is both short as well as long term. We'll go through these impacts one by one. The first one is damage to coastal homes. Whenever there is a cyclone, the coastal areas are the first place to get hit by the storm. The impact is immediately felt as homes are mostly built using local cheap material like wood, woven mats, mud or metal sheets. These building techniques can make thousands of people homeless if the cyclone is of a category 2 or higher. But on the other hand, due to the low cost and availability of these materials, these homes can be rebuilt in weeks. The second one is redistribution of sand. A cyclone is associated with storms, torrential rain and strong winds. Winds are the first thing to blow towards the landmass. As I have already said, Cyclone Amphan's maximum wind speed went up to around 185 km per hour. This kind of high wind velocity will move the sand from the deltaic region of West Bengal and Odisha along the direction of the wind. Sometimes the sand spreads over the agricultural fields of lower deltaic districts of West Bengal and Odisha. This reduces the fertility of the soil and turns it unproductive for a good amount of time. The third one is rise in river level. If you look at the map of West Bengal, the Hooghly River which is also the Ganga is the longest river that flows in between the state of West Bengal and drains into the Bay of Bengal. If you have watched the video where I have explained the formation and mechanism of a tropical cyclone, in that video there was a point where I said tropical cyclones are intense because there is a continuous supply of moisture from the ocean and sea. As soon as the cyclone crosses the coast and enters the landmass, the supply of moisture gets cut off. As a result, the power of the cyclone naturally decreases. So the place where tropical cyclone crosses the coast is called the landfall of the cyclone. However, if you look at this Hooghly River, it is about 32 km wide. When the cyclone reaches the coastal area of West Bengal, the moisture supply to the cyclone doesn't stop because of the existence of the Hooghly River. So basically this river acts like a road for the cyclone to enter into the hinterland. This means there will be a rise in the water level of the Hooghly River. The Hooghly River serves as a navigable waterway to the capital city of Kolkata from Haldia ports. Rising river level is a major problem for those who reside on the banks of River Hooghly. Although this cyclone made its landfall in the state of West Bengal, otherwise the point of rise in river level is true for the state of Odisha too. In Odisha, the Mahanadi River can act as a road for the storm to enter into the hinterland. The famous Paradi port is situated at the confluence of the Mahanadi River and the Bay of Bengal. 
By the way, this seaport did face some damages due to the strong winds of Cyclone Amphan. The fourth point is overflow of seawater. The next thing you have to realize is that there will be an overflow of seawater due to heavy wind and high waves. As seawater overflows and submerges the land, the salty water will kill crops and make the farmland infertile. Seawater also kills the fish which are reared in the freshwater ponds. That means a severe cyclone is detrimental for the agriculture and fisheries sector. The fifth point is collapse of trees and buildings. Uprooting of trees may cause death and injury to human beings and animals. It blocks road and disrupts transportation. Falling of trees also snap electric wires which cuts the supply of electricity and communication. All of these are loss of public as well as private assets. In fact, trees are valuable and growing assets which are worth three times the investment. According to a study, 100 trees remove 53 tons of carbon dioxide and 430 pounds of other air pollutants per year. So the economic benefits of trees are both direct and indirect. People lose their belongings and valuable assets due to the damage of private buildings. If a government building collapses, valuable documents of the public are either lost or damaged. If an academic institution is damaged, it hampers the education of many children for time being. Snapping of electric wires and telephone lines may disrupt many economic activities, which has compounding effect on many other sectors. After all, these are basic essential services. The sixth point is migration or displacement of people. As per the news, the NDRF has evacuated around 20 lakh people from the coastal districts of West Bengal and Odisha to shelter homes. Keep in mind, right now the country is facing lockdown. Many of these shelter homes are already packed with people who are under quarantine. As a result, this leads to a massive gathering which is against the idea of maintaining a social distance. Now this kind of large-scale migration or population displacement from coastal region to the hinterland will put pressure on the local resources, administration and infrastructure. The seventh point is outbreak of infectious diseases. Many households use open well as water sources in rural coastal areas. These wells will be flooded with seawater. Then continuous heavy rain will also cause water logging in many areas. As a result, water logging causes contamination which further causes illness like dysentery, diarrhea, dengue, typhoid, etc. Ill health is more unpredictable than loss of life. Moving forward, the family has to accept the burden of medical expenditure. That also leads to falling in debt trap, which triggers many other problems due to continuous economic pressure with low social status. Recovering from these losses is very challenging. People don't have insurance to claim on damages that is done to crops, goods or livestock. For those in the informal sector, there is no government support to fall on if they lose their jobs. Therefore, the effects of a tropical cyclone on the contamination of drinking water quality and loss of life is a serious issue. And the eighth point is loss of biodiversity. Severe cyclones cause varying degrees of destruction including tearing branches from trees and destroying vegetation. This often results in loss of animal habitats, interrupting and changing ecosystems. Cyclone Amphan has caused serious damages to the ecologically sensitive Sundarbans region. The Sundarbans forest is shared by both India and Bangladesh. India roughly has about 40% of it. Agriculture, aquaculture, rearing livestock, forestry, fishing, honey collecting, hunting, etc. are some of the main occupation for most of the inhabitants in the Sundarban region. We know that the Sundarbans is a deltaic region formed mainly by the continuous deposition of silt carried down by the Ganga Bhagirathi Hooghly river system. As a result, the locals have made numerous river embankments to stop the salt water from entering the land. Salt water is bad for agriculture and aquaculture. The cyclone has destroyed these river embankment across the Sundarbans which has led to salt water entering the land. Plus we also know that the Sundarban forest is a mangrove forest. Mangroves are the only species of tropical forests that can survive and thrive in saline water. During cyclones, mangrove roots and branches form a barricade against the intrusion of saline water and also act as a wind breakers. The Sundarban mangrove cover played a primary role in resisting the storm 
by reducing wind speed and breaking the waves. However, it wasn't enough to protect the natives' livelihoods. The tropical cyclones removed much of the forest canopy as well as changed the landscape near coastal areas by moving and reshaping sand dunes and causing extensive erosion along the coast. So these are some of the major economic impacts of a cyclone that has both short as well as long-term effects. Use this mapping approach and scrutinize the dimensions of your critical thinking and set your own intellectual standards. I hope you found this video informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching it.